time to indulge in a bit of reading. The old ones are always the best, you know. Do you know, despite the considerable benefits and advances that the internet has brought to us, especially from an entomological point of view, you still can't beat using books. This, despite dating from 1974, this edition, although the original writing goes back to the 1930s, I think, there's still so much information in this information that if it's on the internet you have to really dig for it to some obscure website i just love the way the authors wrote in those days it's more descriptive than is used by the authors of today and although the books are far better really than these books dating from 1970s and earlier they do miss something in terms of warmth of writing. Quite often I still refer to this book. And yet this is a book very much from my childhood. If any book started me off on moths, it would be this one. And to be honest, I don't know how that very first copy, because this is several copies on from the very first copy we all got wore out as a child i don't know how it ended up in my possession it was probably given to us from so auntie and uncle that knew how an interest in nature and as the older books got wore out they got replaced by this modern 1974 edition but it's still a really good book it is dated in some Parts, I refer to the pine hawk moth here, and it describes the pine hawk moth being a species which used to be confined to the pine wooded areas of Dorset and Suffolk. And these were two distinct colonies. Today, however, the Dorset colony is spread on the coast and inland along the sandy areas where pine trees abound as far as Crowborough. The Suffolk colony has also extended its area chiefly southwards so that now the two colonies almost overlap. Possibly, this hawk moth is now most easily found in the Bournemouth area. Not to mention of Nottinghamshire, because it was nowhere near Nottinghamshire in those days. But it's just lovely the way it's written. There's lots of tips that are well worth remembering if you flick through this. Especially if you're looking for lava and things like that, there's some really good bits of advice. But you compare this book to what we have today. And the books that I'm asked for or asked about, which are the best books for moth identification, then really, unless you want to spend hundreds of pounds, there's only two that you need. And that's these two. The Field Guide to the Micro Moths and Moths of Great Britain and Ireland. By far the best and easily usable. The these pictures are just fantastic. Beautifully painted and illustrated by Lewington. I think every body that traps moths in the UK has this book not too far away from the moth trap then a few years ago this came out and this is the sister version to the one I just showed you 
beautifully illustrated again by Lewington. And Lewington actually contacted us and based many of his paintings on the photographs on our own website. We chose our website because the photographs we have showed all the moths in the natural resting position wherever possible but also showed them in daylight conditions in natural light so he had something to go by so we do get a mention to listen myself at the beginning of this book but it's a great book i must admit though i don't use it as much as the book on the larger moths but this is still a book that if you're interested in moths you should have The other book that I'd recommend is the traditional one, Skinner's. Now, this book came out before the two books that I just showed you. It's an excellent book. The descriptions and everything's a fair, you know, to the point and well written. The only thing that lets it down, personally, from my point of view, and this is why I wouldn't recommend it, what I would recommend is that they reprint it and print it with today's better printing technology and methods, because these plates, however wonderful, haven't been reproduced the best. It could be far, far better. And another criticism really if you was going to be picky would be the plates on pugs and some of the carpet moths as well they could be bettered by having fewer on the plate pugs most pugs can't really be identified from photographs anyway so whether the benefits of printing smaller number of individuals but more to on a larger scale more to a page whether that would be beneficial or not i don't know i think it would at least it points you in the right direction and if the printing was better then i would certainly go out and buy an updated copy it is very very good but it's a book i rarely use that's been out quite a few years now really is in considerable need of a reprint so once you're armed with books what's next well various websites on the internet are available and it's usually websites that i use for identifying micro moths it is probably the best way with good photographs i don't think a book will ever give a reasonable description and view of microboss they are too small for the printed article in my view websites are far more useful but you need to spend a lot of time going through photo galleries before making any attempt to identify that micro but in terms of macro moths, the larger moths, which is what most people watching this will be more interested in. If you're looking for a book, for a birthday present or a Christmas present for that moth trapper in your life, I'd recommend this one. But it's a good read that would take you back to perhaps fonder times. I'd still look around for one of these. The Observer's books aren't printed anymore. I think it was early 2000s when they stopped printing them. But it's a nice little pocket book to read. And to be honest, it does show you most of the moths that you're likely to come across. And although this dates back to the 1970s, the illustrations are very good they're very true to life and you're looking at about actual size as well now there's a moth that's 
Well, I've not seen actually, but what I'd like to see Spurge Hortomoth. That one. I think I'll have to have a read of this and dream. That's the thing about books compared to the internet. They make your mind wander and they feed your mind more, but it's all down to the writing of the authors. The other good books I was you know, might as well mention while I'm on now was a couple of volumes produced by South or written by South. They were brilliant. You used to get them at school out of the school library. They were permanently on loan to me or my friend. Wish I'd nicked them now when I left. Because nobody else would have glanced at them. They were the bobber too now. And they were lovely. They were great to read. But this takes me back to those early days of Mothin. So, just a little idea. If you're looking for a book on moths, or are just about to get into moths and want to know what to get first, what books to get first, start with that one. And I'm not being paid to advertise. I'm doing all this out of the goodness of my heart, you know. Now then. Where were we? Uh, 